Shalom, shalom, Yahshua. I'm going to start off first things first. Give all praise and glory to Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shah, Bahashim, Rahab Kadash, Paleo Hebrew Tongues, Great Nation of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Double honors to the Apostle Elders of Great Millstone. And shalom to your sister, Buzz Levin, is true. And shalom to the Buzz and sisters that's listening and standing to show themselves approved. Shalom. And as you can see, y'all saw in the comment board. You know, we had somebody, I feel it sincere, they asked if I could do a lesson on reincarnation. Because I, you know, briefly went into that in my last lesson. So, well, I talked about going into it to give further edification on that. So now I feel it's a good time to go into reincarnation, show that it is indeed biblical. And not only is it biblical, but it's a key ingredient you need to fully understand the scriptures. Because without it, a lot of things you're going to read are not going to make sense. So you have to know about reincarnation in order to get the full mysteries of the kingdom of the heaven. So I'm about to run through this lesson. Um, it's going to be a long one. I'm going, we're going, it's going to be very precept heavy. Because I really want to nail this point home and show you reincarnation in the scriptures. So bear with me. This is going to be a long one. And Lord willing, you'll be edified. You know, because you got to have that. As you can just see through these couple of pictures, they shouldn't have put that in there. He didn't look like that when he came out. But you can see reincarnation's indeed real. I know you've seen all kind of examples. The famous saying, him or she done been here before. You know, you done heard that a whole lot. And that's because that's true. Look at that one, man. They look just like Eddie Murphy. So with that, let's get to the scriptures and show you that that's true. And I want to start off first things first. Instead of going to my regular, let's go to the Blue Letter Bible. Because I want to highlight a certain word. Let's go to Matthew 19 and 28. Let's start us off. And this reads, this is Matthew 19 and 28. And Yahweh shall say it to them, Verily I say unto you, that ye which have followed me in the regeneration, when the Son of Man shall sit on the throne of his glory, yea, also shall sit upon the twelve thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. Let's repeat that. Key word in there. Regeneration. Let's highlight that. Let's highlight that word. You heard he said, Yahweh Shah said, you follow me in the regeneration. How do you follow Yahweh Shah in the regeneration? Let me see, go back. Bear with me, Yashra. Let me get it back to where I wanted it. In fact, start over. Because I want to highlight the word regeneration. I did it again. And I want to show you some what it says in the blue letter. Let's get the strongs. Strongs G, 3824. Polygonacea. 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 Check it out. And check out what that word means. New birth. Reproduction. Renewal. Recreation. Keyword. New with key words, new birth. So that's a new cycle. So that word right there, you're talking about regeneration. You, if you look at that, that also goes into reincarnation. Because it says regeneration. Renewal. Recreation. Bringing back. So I want to check that word out right there. Look, rebirth. 
Rebirth. Come on, man. That's big. So y'all was trying to tell us something in that precept right there. You know? And let's prove. Let, let's go find something else to show you that Yahweh Shah was telling us something that you would have to come back here again. You're going to live many lifetimes here on earth. You know, many a times. Because that's the only way you can follow Yahweh Shah through the regeneration. So check this out. Let's show something else to get your brain going. Let's go to Revelation 10 and 10. Now check out what this say got right here. Check this out, Yahshua. This is Revelation 10 and 10. And I took the little book out of the angel's hand and ate it up. And it was in my mouth sweet as honey. And as soon as I had eaten it, my belly was bitter. So he's talking about the word right there. That's what John the Revelator is talking about. This is him. You know, he's talking to an angel. And he's talking about the word of Yahweh. So when he put it in, he said it was sweet in his mouth. And when it got in his belly, it was bitter. And that's kind of like bending his truth. You know, you first get in the truth, you all happy, go lucky. You like, oh, man, I got my idea back. And then once you're in it, you realize people are going to hate you. You're going to lose things for your house child's sake. And then that's when that bitterness comes in. But you can't let that bitter make you offended. So here's the kicker. Check this out, y'all, Sharala. This is Revelation 10 and 11. And he said unto me, thou must prophesy again before many peoples and nations and tongues and kings. Keyword again. So that was Yahweh telling John the Revelator that you're going to have to prophesy again. Now, how can he prophesy again if he old about to die on the island of Patmos? How you going to prophesy again? It's because he's going to be reborn again. His spirit is going to come back in another flesh and he's going to get right back to where he lost off at. All the prophets are here. Well, the majority of them. You know, uh, Enoch and Elijah already got translated. Majority of the prophets, they're here. You know, uh, King David, you know, uh, uh, Matthew, you know, James, John the Revelator, John the Baptist, they're, they're, are, they're still here. They're just being reincarnated through many lifetimes. And every time they come back, what does it say in that scripture said? When they come back, they prophesy again. Before many nations, tongues, and kings. Because you might get born again, and you might get born to say Espanol Spanish. Then you might be prophesying that language. Or you might, you know, get reincarnated down, and you might be in Swahili. You just, you know, you never know. But the scripture let us know that John was going to have to prophesy again before many nations and many kings, you know. And then here we go, we're going to bring up another precept that's going to further prove reincarnation. But that's a big kicker right there. So if you don't understand reincarnation, you will understand that. Because you'll be like, how he going to prophesy again? And he only got one life. You know, they tell you that YOLO spirit. You only live once. That's a lie. No, you don't. You live many of times. <laughs> and as we go through the scriptures, you're going to see that. So check it out. Let's go get this one. This is Jude. Get Jude 1 and 5. And check this out. Watch what this reads. This is Jude 1 and 5. I will therefore put you in remembrance, though ye once knew this. Know that the Lord, having saved the people out of the land of Egypt, afterward destroyed them that believed not. So you hear that? He said, I will put you in remembrance. For me to remember something, that means I had to already know it in order for me to remember it. Otherwise, it'd be something said to me that I've never heard before. So, Yahabashah said, I will put you in remembrance. The same thing as Baruch 2 and 30. In the land of captivity, they should remember themselves. Loosely paraphrasing. What are we remembering? We're remembering that we are Israelites. We're remembering the gospel of Yahabashah was shy. All we got to do is get turned to this word, get the proper understanding, and then our faith is right there. It's kicked right in. It never left us. It's right here. Because he said, though ye once knew this, that having the Lord saved the people out of the land of Egypt. Because who came out of the land of Egypt? Israelites did. You know? And he said, well, he destroyed them. They believed not. He about to do that again. All the two-thirds, the ones that mumbled when they was getting led in the, in the wilderness to, the, to the, the land of promise that was mumbling. All the ones that said, uh, we have no king but Caesar. All those wicked two-thirds Israelites that believe not, have no faith. They're about to be destroyed. They're about to learn Yahweh the hard way. 
because they believe if not, you know, even though they, they should have been put in remembrance of their ID and their faith should have kicked in. That's why faith is a very vital and important gift. If you have it, you know, cherish that because that, that's the, the oil and the glue to make everything kick. That's what he's putting us in remembrance of. The belief in Yahweh Bashim, Yahweh Shah. That's what we got to remember. Remember we Israelites, remember to keep the commandments, and remember to believe on him, Yahweh Shah, who Yahweh has sent. That's what we're getting stirred up in the remembrance of. That's why this word has stood the test of time for the hopeful elect to get back and hear the word, get into the word, and then get back right where they left off at. You know, a lot of us um, been destroyed during the, what's that? Probably the, the Black Wall Street era, um, slavery, things of that nature. And now we're back here again. And even though Esau took our life away or whatever way we got judgment, in this lifetime, we're coming back to where we left off at based on this word still being here. That's why Yabashah preserved his word because it would be a marker and a gathering for all the hopeful elect. Because this book has stood the test of time. And the 144,000, those souls are relics. They've been here since the beginning. And it's been going through the regeneration, regeneration to the perfect time, the time of the harvest. So check that out. So with that being said, let's get some examples of reincarnation, a very big marker of reincarnation through the scriptures. Like let, let's bust up some mysteries with this one. So check it out while I'm talking about Yahweh Shah. Because he also, let's say Yahweh Shah was the revealer of all the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. Because he also said this in Matthew 1 and 1. And this is a big one right here, y'all. Check this out. Check this out. This is Matthew 1 and 1. And check out what it reads. Now this, this right here. This is Matthew 1 and 1. The book of the generation of Yahweh Shah Hamashiach, the son of David, the son of Abraham. Woo! That's a mystery. You hear that? It said Yahweh Shah, the son of David, and the son of Abraham. Now, if anybody's familiar with the scriptures, you know, Abraham and King David was born in almost two different eras. So how can Yahweh shall be the son of David and the son of Abraham? How? <laughs> They're going to break it down. First, you got to know who was the son of David and who was the son of Abraham. The son of Abraham was Isaac, you know, for anybody that's up on their scriptures. And the son of, of David, King David, was who? King Solomon, you know, so Yahweh Shai busted open the mystery for us right there by telling us who he was in the reincarnation, because he said, I'm the son of David, and he said, I'm the son of Abraham, and then when you read it in the proper context of the scriptures, that makes sense, because both of those individuals was very powerful, Isaac and King Solomon, very, very powerful, big markers right there, and now when I, I, know I first read through the scriptures and I read it, I didn't understand the, the magnitude of the power they had. I looked at Isaac like, you know, how's Isaac able to give two sons a blessing and they come true like that? Who is Isaac to do that? Most people ain't got power to do nothing like that. Because remember, Isaac had two sons. He had Esau and Jacob. And he both gave them both blessings and both of them came true and still running to this day. That's power. So you got to look, who is Isaac? How was he able to get that type of power? Then you look at King Solomon. You know, who was made the wisest man of all. You know, he talked to Yahweh directly like he was the son. You know, that, that used to intrigue me when I first read the scripture when I'm in Kings. I'm like, how does King Solomon have this much sway? It's like he got more power than King David. King David just did what Yahweh told him to do. He wasn't able to talk to Yahweh like that and ask for a gift and get it. But King Solomon was. So I used to read that like, dang, what, what made King Solomon so special? And now... Through the wisdom and, and knowledge through the scriptures, I now understand what Yahweh Shah meant when he said, I'm the son of David and the son of Abraham. Because when you look at King Solomon, let's go get a uh, let's go get something that really, really opens it up. Let's go back to Kings. Because you know, you read the scriptures, if you don't understand reincarnation, it's gonna be things you're gonna read in the scriptures, it's gonna like, you know, gonna make you scratch your head. Like, man, hold up. How was that even possible? So check this out. I'm going to read 1 Kings 3 and 12. And to give you proper perspective, this is when King Solomon was talking to Yahweh and he was asking for a gift. And he asked it for uh, 
an understanding heart to judge thy people. When you go to verse 9, he asked for that. And that pleased Yahweh. So Yahweh gave, gave it to him. And then that's what he said too. And this is like when I first read this, it kind of tripped me out. Because I'm like, who is King Solomon to get that? So check it out. This is 1 Kings 3 and 12. And it says, Behold, I have done according to thy word. Lo, I have given thee a wise and understanding heart, so that there was none like thee before thee, neither after thee shall any arise like unto thee. So none before King Solomon, none after King Solomon. Yahweh made King Solomon the smartest man to ever live. And I'm like, okay, so he's smarter than Yahweh Shah? I thought Yahweh Shah had all wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. So when I was first reading this, when I was young in the truth, that was something that kind of like, you know, tripped me up for a minute. But, you know, I kept with it. But I was like, who is King Solomon? You know, they puzzled me. I'm like, how he get that type of power? And then the proper perspective is, that is Yahweh Shah. That's why Yahweh talked to him like a son, because that was the son. That was him in the flesh of King Solomon. So he was given that gift because his spirit was that of Yahweh Shah. He just wasn't in that, the flesh of Yahweh Shah yet. Because this thing is like a long, played out movie. And you come back to this earth every three to four generations. I'm going to prove that later on. And King Solomon, because we just read, we just read Matthew 1 and 1, right? And Yahweh Shah said, I'm the son of David. I'm the son of Abraham. So he told us right there in Matthew that he was King Solomon. And that's proven right here in that verse we just read. Because he said, I will make none like thee before thee, neither after thee shall any arise like unto thee. So that shows you right then and there. That's why King Solomon had wisdom, this, you know, overflowing. Smartest man ever lived, because that was Yahweh Shah at that flesh. And that's when our king was at his peak. You know, everybody, everybody marveled at the wisdom of King Solomon. You know, we was balling out of control. That's why our people went off, because we were so spoiled. <laughs> we had it so good. So that right there is big. And see how you see how we did that, y'all Sharala? We used Matthew 1 and 1 to unlock. First Kings 3 and 12. Now those make sense, you know? And it also makes sense when you go to Genesis and read about Isaac and why he gave blessings to his sons and they came true. Everybody else prayed for their children, gave blessings, but they weren't big like and impactful like Isaac's. Isaac's blessings still running strong. Like us Israelites, we really do have the birthright. <laughs> you know, we get a little bitty drop of that, of that semen and an Israelite woman and bam, you got a baby. I'm talking about... It, birth control don't even work. Birthright for real. <laughs> Numerous people for real. Then you look at Esau, he, he was blessed with a great sword. He has the strongest military in the world. It's breaking now, but that's how he got control of everything through that sword. And he did get the fatness of the earth. Esau right now is in rulership. Those blessings that Isaac gave came true. So Isaac had to be somebody of importance, and now we know who he was. That was Yahweh Shah. That's why those blessings met something and they still mean something because a birthright really when you look at it yashrala when isaac blessed jacob with the birthright he really gave him the keys to the kingdom of heaven <laughs> you know you just gotta unlock your faith had a rahakadash in you and you can get right in on that blessing man we, we a part of that now that's still going live right now to this day esau trying to slay just like esau said when the when the days of my father's when a, a, a morning, you know, loosely paraphrasing, he said, I should slay my brother Jacob. That's why Esau seeks to take Israelites' blood. Want to always, you know, shed our blood. It's because it was during the beginning of Genesis. And it was because he know we got the birthright. That's why Edomites are jealous of us. It makes sense. So that proves right there. That's what I said. Jacob and forefather, he's still, he's back to this day. All those, uh, the 12 uh, sons, they're here to this day. All these Israelites have been reincarnated over and over again. That's why Esau, that, that hatred, he said perpetual hatred is still here. It's not going to go away because all these souls has been recycled. That's why here we are in what, 2022 and you still got racism? That's why. Because it ain't, it's the same spirits, man, getting recycled. So let's further prove, you know, because now we're getting into the spirit. See, this flesh dies. The flesh lives for so long. Then it dies, goes back to the earth, you know, cremate, whatever you want to do. Ashes are back into the earth. But the spirit is infinite. When, when you die, you go to the spirit world. Ain't no, you know, what they talking about, heaven and hell. No, you go to the spirit world. You go back to Yahweh. And then 
You know, you wait for a time until he puts your spirit back into a body, right back to your seed line through the third and fourth generation. Then you come back again to see, you know, you follow your house trying to regeneration if you're a follower of him or you come here to get your judgment for all of your wickedness you done did, you know, either or. So let's further prove that what I just said, because, you know, now we get into the spirit. Now we get into the real. Because that's that's the thing that never goes away. The spirit reincarnates itself. And that's why this preset right here makes sense. If I can get to my Jeremiah. Jeremiah 1 and 5. And it reads, Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou camest forth out of thy womb, the womb, I sanctified thee and ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. So that, that goes in with Revelation 10 and 10. You know, that precept can go with that precept. Because he said, before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. So how did he know us before we was born within our mother's womb? That's because we was a spirit. Yeah, how we already know these spirits. You know, everybody got their spiritual walk. So when he puts you in the belly, especially when he said, I, I know thee before I formed thee, he really talking to the hopeful elect because he knows the hopeful elect. And the hopeful elect know Yahweh Bashiach was shy. And what did he say? I sanctify thee. You know, you sanctify something, you make it holy, you put it, you know, separate. And he said, I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. So that really feels a lot, especially for those brothers that's in here doing this truth. You know, let's say these brothers are doing the truth like uh, Yahweh the Maccabees. His name is Samuel. <laughs> He's, a He's a strong, mighty prophet. That might be the Samuel that, you know, uh, raised up King David. You know, you never know. I mean, he's doing the, the lot. He's doing the same thing. He prophesying, you know. So all those prophets that prophesied that you read about in this book, they're here to this day. They're still, they back in their lot. And all they got to do is hear the word and they're going to click right in, fall right back in their lot. That's why this thing is so scary to Esau because it's like, damn, I can put an Israelite to death and... You know, I still can't step out this truth because it's like when they be born, it's like something hit them. They'll hear the word. That's why we prophesy on the highway and hedges and put these video pistols out. When the hopeful they hear that, these youngsters hear that, if they were a follower in their former life, they're going to be a follower in the new life they got. And they'll lock right in. They'll be right at attention because it, it'll resonate with you. It's like this truth resonated with me. When I first heard it, I was like, bam, this is what I'm supposed to do. This I was born to do this. This is what I, this is my lot. Now I'm back in my lot, you know? So I, now I know I was a follower of Yahweh Shah back in my former life because it's very easy for me to follow him in this life. Like, that's the number one thing I love to do. Like, I, I've been wanting, I've been yearning for this. So I know I followed him back, you know, in my former life. Probably got hung, probably got killed by Esau because, you know, I, I'm giving reverence to Yahweh Shah and here I am in the in regeneration this lifetime and I'm right back in my lot. So that, that scares that devil. Because death can't stop this truth. You know, the spirit is infinite. So when you go, hey, y'all was shy, like you said. Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. You know, he already know the whole flick. He know the whole flick is. So all he doing is preserving it. So when we come back, you know, through the reincarnation, regeneration, we fall right back in your lot. Now, if you go two-thirds. And you told them, I have no king but Caesar. You don't like your Howard Shy. Um, you was the one dancing around when they made the golden calf. You know, they was in uh, coming out of Egypt. You right back in that lot. That's why so many of our people love jewelry, love mammon, because they was like that back then. Now they're just here to get their proper judgment. That's all it is. So everybody's still in their lots. So if you're a believer of your Howard Shy, that means you believe before. You know, the ones that don't want to hear this word, they didn't want to hear it back then. They didn't want to hear Yahweh Shah back then. They said free Barabbas. You know, they didn't want Yahweh Shah. And I, I see these souls now. That's why I be looking. I can tell what type of soul person had based on what they want to do with their life. Like when you hear the word Yahweh Shah, Shah, did that resonate with you? Because it resonated with me when I heard it. You know, I was looking for the name. I was seeking the Lord before I even knew him. I was looking for it. So when I found it, it was like, bam, I locked right in. Like, I got what I've been missing. So this, this truth is, is, is big. That's why I understand now when they say, yeah, how much I beat death? Because he did. And he showed us how to beat death. So now you can't, Esau can't stop this truth, even if you take your life away. 
he can't stop it. It's <laughs> nothing he can do because this is all based in prophecy. And it's all based on what Yahweh Shah want. And he's going to get his hope free let. One way or another. <laughs> you know, ain't nothing Esau can do that can block that out. All the hopeful like in their lot, all the two thirds are in their lot. You know? But all everybody gonna, you know, eventually all of Israel is gonna be saved, which I'll get to that later. Let me not get ahead of myself. So to prove a point on that, that all, you know, spirits are of Yahweh, Bashem Yahweh Shah, and chiefly Yahweh, because he is the creator of all spirits, he's the father of all spirits. Yahweh is. You know, and the first spirit he ever made was who? Yahweh Shah. You know, that's why the one begotten son, that's why Yahweh Shah has such reverence and sits at the right hand of Yahweh, who is the creator of all spirits. So check it out. Let's go get that. Let's just go to wisdom. Wisdom of Solomon. Fifteen and sixteen. And check this out. I might start at fifteen for, you know, a reference to give you what he's really talking about. So check this out. I'm gonna start at Wisdom of Solomon fifteen and fifteen. For they counted all the idols of the heathen to be gods, which neither had the use of eyes to see, nor noses to draw breath, nor ears to hear, nor fingers of hands to handle, and as for their feet. They are slow to go. And here go to the kicker on 16. For man made them, and he that borrowed his own spirit fashioned them. But no man can make a God like unto himself. So did you hear what Yahweh Shah was talking about right there when he said, and he borrowed his own spirit, fashioned them. So you, we really borrow these spirits. We don't own these spirits, man. Yahweh does. Because he's the maker. He was talking about them idols. Everybody, you know, them false gods they make. They ain't really got no spirit. The only entity that can create a spirit is Yahweh. He's the father of all spirits. And so the spirit that we got belongs to him. That's why we borrow it. That's why you can't create something with another spirit unless you do it the way he designed. Like reproduction. You know, that, that's the only way you're going to get a, a, a spirit like that. These machines, you know, what man is making, they don't, they're not really animated. They don't have a spirit because what animates the body is the spirit. You know, that's what gives your body life. That's what makes it move. That's what you think of your mind, you know, the consciousness that's related to the spirit. When you lose that, the spirit goes to your howl. That's it for that body. You know, and he said, but no man can make a God like unto himself. So that's what makes your howl so special because he's the creator of all spirits. And no other entity can do that. Only him. He's a judge. You know, he, that's why he's everything. That's why you got to give all reverence to Yahweh, Bashim, Yahweh Shah. You know, especially Yahweh. Well, really, both of them. Yahweh Shah, too. Because the <laughs> only way you're going to get to Yahweh is through Yahweh Shah. You know, they tell you that in the scriptures a whole lot. That's why you think Yahweh Shah gets so much reverence to his father, Yahweh. He's the creator of all spirits, creator of all things. That is the creator, the Almighty. The most high. You gotta give it up to him. Gots to. You know, but what what you know, these little look crazy people with no faith, what they do, make idols, like they just said right there, and they try to give that life to that. It's like Esau, he's trying to give life to his beast system, you know, uh artificial intelligence, you know. Man is always trying to make something. He they trying to be like the most high, which you can't. You you just gonna be you can't do it, man. You low level. And you have a shot about to show these devils that real soon. So check it out. That wisdom of Solomon 15 and 16 can also go all the way. Check this out, y'all, Sharala. Let's go back to Deuteronomy. Five and nine. And look, we're about to get to the real nitty gritty now. So check out, watch how this reads. This is Deuteronomy 5 and 9. Thou shalt not bow down thyself unto them, nor serve them. For I, the Lord, thy Yahweh, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. Woo! Hey, Yahweh Shah just gave us a whole bunch of clues in that verse right there, man. He talking about don't be worshiping no false gods. And if you do, he's going to visit your iniquity onto the third and fourth generation. So basically, Yahweh Shah is letting us know when you come back here. 
That's why having children is so vital and important to carrying your seed line because you come back to your seed line in the third and fourth generation. That's when the Most High going to visit you. That's when you're going to get your judgment. And that's big. And I'm going to show you how big that is because it's in here three times. So we just read it in Deuteronomy 5 and 9, right? So check this out, Yashua. Let's go to Numbers. Numbers 14 and 18. And watch it say the same thing. The Lord is long-suffering and of great mercy. Forgiving iniquity and transgression, by no means clearing the guilty, visiting iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generations. You peep that. He said it again. He gonna visit you. Why in the third and fourth generation? You know why? Because that's when you come back. That's when you back. So now I understand why certain children are born with Down syndrome, born blind, um, born with any type of defects. It's because they getting that that judgment from the past, what they did in their past lifetime, or might. Like a young child might die from a uh, SIDS, you know, sudden death syndrome. Uh, they might get shot, a house fire, and they only like two years old, ain't did nothing. Or maybe like six months old. They're getting judgment for what they did in their past lifetime. Now it's making sense because how about y'all said he's going to see you in the third and fourth generation. Because that's when you're going to be reincarnated again to get your judgment. And he said not letting you go. You got to think about it too, Yasharala. Especially like for a southern tribe, you know, they, our answers went into slavery. They're hard bonded slavery with the yoke of iron on your neck. You know, you got hung. Uh, Esau raped our ancestors, hung us, um, chopped your foot off. You didn't pick enough cotton, you know, uh, buck breaking. There's all kind of wickedness, man. A lot of them Edomites died peacefully at the peak of their rulership. You know, nothing bad happened to them. So you would look at that corner and think like, man, they got away. Like they lived a good life. But really... That's not so. Those Edomites that did it to our ancestors during the what, 1700s, 1600s, you know, the early 1900s, they're here again to get their judgment because they come here in the third and fourth generation. Right now, we're dealing with those that did our people in that horror bond of slavery then. We're dealing with that generation now. They own meth, you know, they all messed up and they about to really get their judgment now. They didn't get away. <laughs> That's why Yabashet said, I would not clear the guilty. They're here to get their judgment. They like the kingdom. Our ancestors built up for these devils. They're about to watch it be destroyed. You know, that's why this Esau is so unsettled right now. Because he just can't believe what's happening. Esau thought he was going to rule forever. You know, everything they built is now being destroyed before their eyes. And it's hurting them. That's why they, they putting all their eggs in their own trunk. In that basket. And really, they, they about to get their judgment, man. They about to get, woo. They about to get messed up. So check it out. That's in Numbers 14 and 18, right? We can also go to Exodus. Let's go to Exodus. 34 and 7. Check it out. This is Exodus 34 and 7. Keeping mercy for thousands, forgiving iniquities and transgression and sin, and that will by no means clear the guilty, visit the iniquity of the fathers upon the children and upon the children's children unto the third and to the fourth generation. Woo, there it go again. He said it three times, y'all, Sharala. So you know he really tried to drive that point around. And he's letting us know when you come back in the regeneration and the reincarnation, it's the third and fourth generation. And then you're going to get the reward of whatever your works was, whatever you did. You know, did you serve the Lord? Did you go against the Lord? Whatever wickedness you did, adultery, all of that stuff, you're going to get judgment for that, man. And see, that's scary, too, when you think about it, because you don't know what you did in your past life. When you're born again, we're really left with, like, the bare things, like the Rahakadash faith. If you had that in your former lifetime, you'll carry that over. But as far as, like, what you was and what you did, you really don't remember that, you know, so... We carry a lot of, like what they say, iniquity, a lot of sins with us, man. That's why we need Yahweh Shah very, very bad. Because we need those to be cleared. Not this lifetime, but also the past lifetimes. So you got to seek the Lord with all your heart and might. Because I know we carrying a lot of sins, Yahshua. A lot of sins. You can tell how Yahweh Shah messed us up when he let these devils, you know, put us in captivity. So you know we went off, man. You know we carrying a lot of sin. So... 
We got to be praying. We got to be seeking Yahweh with all our might to cleanse us of that. Therefore, we don't get that judgment that he prepared for, you know, the majority of Israel. So we got we to gotta watch out for that. Now, check it out. Since we read those three things, right, and we're talking about Esau and all the wickedness they done did, and it looked like they was going to get away with it, right, but no. And then this right here, what we just read, it opens this precept up. Check it out. Let's go to Isaiah. Go to Isaiah 14, 21, one of my favorite precepts. And I might start at 20. Yeah, I'm going to start at 20 and get more uh, perspective of it. So check it out. This is Isaiah 14 and 20. Thou shall not be joined with them in burial, because thou hast destroyed thy land and slain thy people. The seed of evildoers shall never be renowned. You check that out. He said the seed of evildoers. Who's the evildoers? Who's the wicked? We talking about Esau, Edom. You know, that's why their land been destroyed. So here goes the kicker. Check this out. Now this is going to make sense. On Isaiah 14 and 21, it says, Prepare slaughter for his children, for the iniquity of their fathers, that they do not rise nor possess the land, nor fill the face of the world with cities. You know, check it out, the 22. For I will rise up against them, said the Lord of hosts, and cut off from Babylon the name, the remnant, and son and nephew, saith the Lord. Woo! So, when I remember I first read this and I first came into truth, and I was like, dang. So, I like the, the, I was like, the children got to pay for what the fathers did? And I was like, man, that don't seem like that's right. Like, you know, that I th I'm thinking like, you know, everybody got a new life, new lease, and all of that. I didn't have the full understanding yet. But now with the full understanding of the reincarnation, regeneration, now I understand that precept, especially when it pertains to Esau. All the wickedness their forefathers did, they got to pay that tab. And that's because those wicked, they did that wickedness, put us in slavery. They're here to this day to get that judgment. They didn't get away. They're here to get, you know, the, the fruits and benefits of what they did to our ancestors, what did to us, because we are our ancestors, you know. And he said, well, prepare slaughter for the children, for his children, for the iniquity of their fathers. So them putting us in captivity, horror bondage, you know, they're going to come back through they, you know, the, the great, great grandchildren, great, great, great grandchildren. What do you say? The third and fourth generation. They're here to this day. They're here to this day and they're about to get their judgment. You can see it coming like real soon. So they didn't get away. And now that like that's that's righteous judgment right there. That's righteousness. You know, so we we getting to get that good payback for what you done did to and what you did to me in my former lifetime. You know, we gotta look at the effort. We probably got hung, you know, beat, back beat, uh, wife took, children sold. You know, this devil did a great crime to us, man. And that's why our people carry so much pain, especially the women of our nation. And now with the proper wisdom not to understand it now you see why the scripture read that and why esau is now getting his judgment because we're at the time of esau's end you know he's got to pay recompense for all the wickedness that he done did to the children of israel so that precept perfectly makes sense now with the proper knowledge of reincarnation regeneration it doesn't seem oh that's not fair why the children got to pay for what the father did that's because those children are those fathers the ones they Put us in the hard bond of slavery, whipped the back, raped our women, sold the children, fed them the gators, is gator bait, you know, killed children, killed women, men, beat you if you didn't, you know, pick your quota, made you work, worked you to death, literally worked you to death. You know, they about to pay for that. And we're in that season and they know it. That's why there's a lot of fear on Esau right now. Because he can feel it. He can feel it. <laughs> that he's about to get that work. So with that, let's take let's let's shift gears and go on to Yasharala and show you that reincarnation is indeed biblical and true. So check this out. If you don't understand this, this precept right here make you stumble too. Let's go to Romans. Let's go to Romans eleven and twenty six. I 
Now check it out. This is Romans eleven twenty six. Now see, without the proper understanding, this will kind of make you like I don't understand that. So check it out. This is a uh, Romans eleven twenty six. And so all Israel shall be saved, as it is written. There shall come out of Zion the deliverer, and shall turn away ungodliness from Jacob. Now. When you hear that, you say all Israel should be saved. You be like, you know, you read Zechariah 13, they like, oh, oh, look, I thought two thirds going to be cut off and die. So all Israel going to be saved, you know, without the proper standing, you won't get that. But I'm going to let you know right now why they said, because there was a covenant made in Hebrews 8 and 10. You know, all Israel will be saved because as we recycle you know, as spirits get born when the kingdom of heaven is established, you know, they they're going to be saved then. They're going to be righteous then once they're born in the kingdom. Because there's going to be a lot of birth in the kingdom to prove that. Let's check it out. Romans 11 and 26 goes perfectly with Isaiah. Isaiah 60 and 22. And stay with me because I'm going to make this all make sense. All, it's going to be a bunch of priests that's going to all tie in. And it's going to make perfect sense. So stay with me, Yashra. So check it out. It's Isaiah 60 and 22. And it reads, A little one shall become a thousand, and a small one a strong nation. I, the Lord, will hasten it in his time. In his time. You peep that it said, A small should become a thousand. So a whole flick in the kingdom going to have a thousand children. You know? He's going to become a strong nation, a small one. He's going to turn into a strong nation. There's going to be a lot of birth in the kingdom of heaven. The kingdom of heaven is going to be established right here on earth when Yahweh Shah comes back, which goes with that priesthood we read earlier. You know, follow me in the regeneration, and you should be judging the 12 tribes on the throne. You know, Lucy paraphrasing, but we read that in Matthew 19 and 28. You know, so you check that out. It said, a little one should become a thousand. So that goes with what we just read. In Romans 11 and 26, because all Israel is going to be saved. And here's why. Let's go to Hebrews 8 and 10. So as they are born, because all the two-thirds, they're going to get, they're going to have to know your house shot by pain. They're going to have to get their judgment right here on earth. And they're going to be put to death. Now, they're going to be born again. Could you come back? 34th generation. You know, spirits get recycled. Reincarnation, right? So they're going to die on this side of Babylon the Great. Depending on whatever they judgment they get, you know, the ICBM thermonuclear missiles, starve to death, Esau gun them down with, with a weapon, you know, whatever little judgment they get on this side. Now, once the kingdom is established, when you have a shot crack them clouds to come back and establish the kingdom with the 144,000 and it's established, then this is going to go into play. And this is Hebrews 8 and 10. And it says, for this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, well, days of Babylon, said the Lord, I will put my laws into their mind and write in them their hearts, and I will be to them a God, and they shall be to me a people. And they shall not teach every man his neighbor and every man his brother, saying, Know the Lord, for all shall know me from the least to the greatest. Did you peep that? So that's how that's a cut to Pastor Portrap talking about we are in the second covenant. No, we're not. We're still up under the first covenant, which is the law. Now, we can't keep the law perfect. That's why we have grace and we have mercy through Yahweh Shah, because he said that blood and he was that perfect sacrifice for us, for our sins. We needed that. We can't get in without Yahweh Shah. So, once Yahweh Shah establishes that, then this verse goes in. This precept I read in this New Testament. That's when a new covenant is established the house of Israel. So, all the two thirds. They die in Babylon the Great while Esau's ruling. You know, with the hopeful elect, the ones he preserved, the one third, the numerous multitude. When they have children and those children, the two thirds are born again, then they're going to get it right. Because why? He said that he was going to put the law, law into their mind and write it in their hearts, you know, which going to your mind. And he said, uh, after that day, you want to teach them no more. The law will be on their inward part. So they're going to be righteous. The system's going to be righteous. We're going to be in rulership. You know, the two-thirds, what I know is what two-thirds of Israel is, they're natural-born followers. They follow whoever's in power. If Yahweh and, and Israel was in power, they'll follow us. Right now, we're not in power. Who's in power? Esau is. So that's why they follow, you know, Esau, you know, Satan, the adversary. They follow him. 
and that vibration because that's what is in power. So the dynamics are going to shift when Yahweh gets back and establishes a new covenant. Therefore, they're going to follow us. And all those souls that get destroyed, because the majority of Israel are going to get destroyed, you know, through Yahweh Shah's coming. They're going to have to know about pain. That's why hell is going to be here on earth. You know, those hot thermonuclear fire, those nukes are going to create the lake of fire right here on earth. And if they make it past all those other judgments, they won't make it past that judgment. And they'll get that judgment and they'll perish and then they'll be born again through the hopeful elect. And then that's when that Romans 11 to 26 will kick in. All of Israel will be saved because they will. Because <laughs> we're going to, you know, we're going to replenish the earth. Then we're going to be able to do what he said back in Genesis. We're going to be fruitful and multiply. The kingdom of heaven is going to be established on earth. It's going to be a utopia, you know, for Israel. We're going to rule again. And you got to like, you got to know reincarnation, regeneration in order to really fully understand the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, to really understand the Bible. Because certain people, just like Peter, King David, King David was reincarnated as Peter. You know, that's why Yahushua said, I will build my church upon you. You will be the cornerstone. Just like our uh, salvation is in the house of David. That's what proves that right there. That's how you know that Peter, that was King David. That was King David. And then when you really look at it too, what I also found out too is that, you know, uh, Moses, that was King David. Same spirit, you know, that's why he was such Moses was such a mighty man, because that was the same spirit King David had, you know, led us up out of Egypt, you know, which really, when I look at it, really, I should say King David was was um, was Moses. You know, that was that same spirit. That's why King David was so mighty. He had the spirit of Moses, you know, leader, leader of his people. You know, that he, he established uh, our earthly kingdom right here. It was established through King David. And then Yahushua said, I'm going to build a church on you, Peter. So that spirit, it, it still, it carried. It's still here. It doesn't go away. You know, and you got to understand reincarnation to understand that. And as you now have that, you know, that wisdom, knowledge, and understanding of that, I say go read the Bible again, Yahushua, and I bet you it's going to make a whole lot more sense whole lot more sense now you're going to really understand it and it's going to flow like water it's like the scriptures compared to living waters when you read it now and you got a perspective of what things is when you read it again with the right understanding it flows it flows like a river it flows like water it's clean i mean clean like that's why i run through the bible like i'll read it then i'll read it again then i'll read it again every time i read it i get a a better understanding it gets more clear because your understanding is better and so I just want to do this lesson to, you know, get the proper standard that reincarnation is indeed biblical. And you need that because plantation Christianity's pastor portraits don't teach that. You know, they like that yellow spirit. Uh, you die once, you go to heaven, you go to hell. They, they full of lies. They don't really have the proper understanding of the scriptures. Because they don't ever tell you the kingdom of heaven is coming. They don't hasten in the coming. You know, they just tell you, put some money in the offering plate and you'll get the kingdom when you go to heaven when you die. You don't even know about the spirit world. They tell you, they don't, they don't even know about, you know, heaven going to be established here. They don't even know hell going to be established here. Judgment is under the sun. The passport child don't know that. And therefore, when you read it, you will stumble a lot without that understanding. So now, with that new mystery that's been unlocked, which I hope I unlocked that for you, now when you read it again, you can go through like Genesis, you can go through like uh, Exodus. You know, you go through the word again and then you'll understand why certain individuals had the power they had because you'll know who they are. You'll know who they are. Like, okay. And like I said, when we read that Matthew 1 and 1, Yahushua told us two people he was in the reincarnation. You understand why those two figures were so powerful. It makes all the sense in the world. It's like that Romans 11 and uh, what was that? 26 make all the sense in the world now. Now I get it. Now I understand why Israel will be saved because they will eventually. It's not, right now, we do the work to understand your placement in the kingdom of heaven. Are you going to be part of the first fruits? Are you going to be born again? <laughs> you got to come through a man's loins <laughs> and be born again and then get it right. See, me, I'm trying to get it right right now. I don't want to have to know you how shot by judgment and know him through pain. And, and then, you know, have to be born again 
I want to get it right and be translated like Enoch, like Elijah. You know, I want to be part of the first fruits and establishing the kingdom. I want to witness that. I want to see that. So I'm getting my act together right now. I know you have a shot right now. I have faith in him right now. See, two thirds, they're going to have to get it. They're going to have to get it the hard way. <laughs> it's going to have to be imprinted on their inward parts because they're just too stiff necked. So if this truth is resonating with you and it's easy for you to believe, that's because you believe. You know, in your earlier lifetimes, you're just doing what we led off with. Uh, you following your house trying to regeneration. So I say, hey, continue to follow him, you know, and Lord willing, you get your reward and you get to be first fruits in the kingdom of heaven where we get to establish the earth in righteousness and peace and harmony and let the earth, you know, see it in its most beautiful state, you know, eat, eat real food again, get to see all your children. You gonna have great, 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 great grandchildren, you know. He said, uh, we, we, we're looking at immortality. You have thousands of children. Come on, thousands of children, Yasharala. And then you have the time to be with all of them. Because you're going to have eternity in the kingdom. We're going to have all the time in the world at that time. We're going to punch no clock. They're going to be punching our clock. So, with that said, I hope it's been edifying. I want to say, Kwam Yasharala, DTA, Baba Fall, Shalom.